Let's go through the questions that we'll do in today's quiz. And this is taken from a problem in our book. Here is the original problem. And by the way, I just want to say something. Um, in engineering problems, it's a good idea to say the names of the elements, the lines or the pipes or the rods, in alphabetical order. So here is a, a pipe that goes between B and D. Call that BD. Uh, our book calls it DB. In other words, he says those letters in reverse order. The thing is, if you have a structure with a lot of different bars and lines in it, if you always list them in alphabetical order, you'll make sure that you don't accidentally uh, do something with something twice, that you've only dealt with it once. So I'm going to call this BD. All right, so here's the original problem. We have two rods. There's a turnbuckle on each rod, and it tightens each rod until this pipe, BD, uh, is compressed with a force of 10,000 pounds. And he tells us that DB has an inside diameter of 1 and an outside diameter of 2. These rods that are uh, being pulled on have an area of 1 square inch each. And then there's a pin at the corner. It has a diameter of 3 quarters. So that's the original thing. And we're going to boil this down into um, steps, simple steps, one step at a time. Let's start with that rod BD, or that pipe BD. So it's hollow. In other words, it's a pipe or a tube. Inside diameter of 1 inch, outside diameter of 2 inches. First, let's find the area of the tube. All right, outside diameter of 2, inside diameter of 1. If you want to use your pi r squared to find the area, then you'll want to break down the diameters into radius. So diameter 2 is a radius of 1. That's the outside. For the inside, a diameter of 1 is a radius of 1 half. 0.5. And you will recall from uh, our previous uh, previous lecture that to find the area of a pipe, you take the area of the outside circle and subtract the area of the inside circle. And if the formula for area that we're using is pi r squared, then for this pipe we would say pi 1 squared minus pi 1 half squared, that will give us the area of this pipe. That is the area of that slice of metal that got uh, in our imagination we, that we sliced through. Okay, now going on to the next thing. Find the compressive stress in pipe BD. So he tells us that when those turnbuckles are tightened up, BD exerts a force of 10,000 pounds on this beam that it's intersecting with. So that's the force, 10,000 pounds. The area you just figured out in the previous question. So you can find the stress. The stress is force over area, 10,000 pounds over whatever that area was that you just found. Now we'll find the area of the pin up here in the corner at C. There's a pin that goes through that stuff. He tells us the pin has a diameter of 3 quarters of an inch, and we need to find the area. Uh, just a reminder, in the previous lecture on slide 5, we talked about here's how to find the area if you know the diameter. So you could use either pi r squared or pi d squared over 4, whichever one you like. You are given the diameter, so you might prefer this second variation. 
question. This pin that goes through this clevis and through that um, rod at C, is that pin in single shear or double shear, do you think? Now, I will give you the force in this rod CD, but uh, how did I do that? And how would you do that uh, if you were doing the original problem in the book where he doesn't give you the force? How would you find that? All right, so let's think about that. He tells you that when these turnbuckles are tightened, it causes BD to push up on this beam with 10,000 pounds of force. So notice how I've made a circle around joint D there. You could draw a free body diagram at D. Get your paper towel tube and just look at joint D. Forget about everything else. And those um, turnbuckles are pulling, they're shortening these rods, they're pulling on those rods, so those rods are in tension, those forces are pulling away from D. And that pipe, BD, is getting compressed, isn't it? So it's pushing towards D. So there are the directions of your force arrows at D. Here's my free body diagram at D. And we already know that BD is 10,000 pounds, so we can draw that in there. Here's our uh, two tension arrows pulling away. Here's our 10,000 pound arrow pushing towards, so we could draw that arrow to scale. We could full size or whatever. So here I drew my arrow to scale. It's 10,000 things long. And I drew lines for the other two bars that are in tension. I don't know how long they are, but I know what angle they are because he gives us these dimensions. So I drew them. And I know that this joint is in equilibrium. So these three arrows will chase each other around in a circle. They'll form a closed loop. So there's my tip to tail triangle. And now I can measure the length of CD, and I will find out that it measures 11,180. That's how I found out that the force, the tension force in rod CD was 11,180 pounds. And we're trying to find out how much is the shear stress in this pin at C, that pin that goes through this hole here. So rod CD, uh, close up here, or zoomed back out here, there's rod CD. And by making our tip to tail diagram, we figured out that it has a force of 11,180 pounds of tension. And in an earlier step, hopefully you figured out that the area of pin C, it's a diameter of 3 quarters, but it's an area of 0.4418 square inches. All right, and we are supposed to find the shear stress in that pin. So we can use our good old stress equation. Stress is force over area. The only thing we need to keep in mind is whether that pin is in single shear or double shear. So think about that when you're saying force over area.